What is going on, YouTube? This is Acid Roots. So I'm going to review the sixth album by Robin Thicke. This project came out in the summer of 2013, and it's called Blurred Lines, titled after the number one hit song that he got from that album, Blurred Lines. And basically, this is pro pretty much Robin Thicke's largest album. I mean, he always had like some of these kind of here and there contemporary R&B cuts throughout the 2000s and stuff in late or early 2010s. But this is the year that he broke even the most. This is the year that he broke even the most. I mean, really, the thing about Robin Thicke is for some reason he was always kind of damned as far as being like a one-hit wonder because years passed after this album came out and for the most part, the only real song off this album that really had any credibility towards it was Blurred Lines. And then on top of that, that uh, crested a, a major lawsuit where both Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams lost a million, a million or so dollars in 2014 from a Marvin Gaye lawsuit. So it was just kind of Robin Thicke's biggest song wound up costing him a lawsuit. And then his wife left him, which resulted in his 2014 album Paula, which was a far cry from the success that he had in 2013. So for some reason, Robin Thicke was just kind of damned. He had a lot of controversy in 2013 between the Miley Cyrus twerking thing his wife leaving him in the lawsuit. So it was just kind of, I don't know where all that came from, all the disdain for Robin Thicke kind of happened, but this is the album that was a part of that. And basically Robin Thicke had a pretty rock solid number one single in Blurred Lines. I just would have to say, this is definitely a song that reminds me of like a classic song for like white collar, blue collar, kind of more cubicle and more suit and tie type stuff, dance cut and that sort of thing. And this is a definite blue collar gem which just doesn't happen too much. I mean, when you think about it, for the most part, you get these kind of synthy, especially in 2013. This was just an original avenue at the time because most of the stuff that was popular in 2012, 2013 was like these LMFAO and Florida and Tayo Cruz type songs that had a lot of EDM sense and just jivey kind of nightclub, get, get your drink on type stuff. But this kind of came out of nowhere where maybe you are still at work and maybe you're not, going home for a few more hours, but you'd like to loosen up a little bit, jive a little bit, and just have some fun at work as opposed to all the fun always having to be when you get done and that type of stuff. And I just feel like that sort of jive as far as that kind of goes. The problem with this is, of course, is this people really dropped Robin Thicke on his head because he didn't have another single similar to Blurred Lines. And I thought maybe that's what people wanted was just another kind of blue collar hit single like Blurred Lines, but it just didn't happen. And as a result, people just kind of weren't really looking for like these electronic and disco like tunes from Robin Thicke, which is really too bad because this is a pretty lively, jivey album with a lot of electronic and just overall dance oriented sense. But it just felt like in terms of the mainstream, most people didn't give a rat's ass, which is really too bad just because this is probably one of Robin Thicke's best albums. This is definitely going to get a rave score but it kind of gets pigeonholed into being a one-hit wonder just because of the sheer success of Blurred Lines, and then people just didn't really give the other dance cuts as singles much of a chance. But I do feel like it's got some good stuff on here. Yeah, I mean, that's the only recommendation I would have had to Robin Thicke. It's just if you were going to do that, I mean, not like I'm trying to coach him, but just to kind of say it, to make a hit song like Blurred Lines, I definitely think it probably could have used at least one more because I admit on this album, there really isn't anything else that really feels like cubicle and blue collar and white collar like across this and i think maybe they should have done that maybe folks just thought that this album was kind of trying to like clout chase or something like that and not give like the full offering when it appeared that way but that's just about the only thing i just would have to say i mean for the most part this is a pretty electric album but it just doesn't have those white collar gems like the hit single so so I'll go ahead and talk about the hit singles here. So the first single was Blurred Lines, the title track, and this came out in the spring, basically the spring of 2013. And this, like I described it a little bit earlier, this is like a really white collar social gathering kind of cut, definitely a dance cut for that sort of thing. It's just a work jam. This has that real kind of office space and this kind of more contemporary and like a social kind of more platonic sense down pretty pat there's just not a ton of songs like this for the most part this feels like a song that is not just i mean it can be a dance club jam but it's just kind of something amongst like your work contemporaries and that type of stuff just a little bit more where these are going to be more your co-workers kind of dance cut more so than just folks like like uh partners that you're trying to meet at dance clubs and bars and 
pubs and that type of stuff. This is just one for kind of a more, hey, you know, this is my work buddy. These are my work buddies, that type of stuff for that sort of thing. It's just an interesting kind of tune to get that. Pharrell and T.I. compliment this song as well. It's too bad about the lawsuit on this song. This is a hit song. I do still like this song today. It's still, even 10 years later, there's not many songs that are kind of like this song. It just kind of came out of nowhere in the summer of 2013. But it just, I mean, I could tell back in those days that Robin Thicke was going to be a one-hit wonder just because this is kind of, I mean, it's not a meme song and it's not like one of those songs that you you quote like um, like Move Bitch by Ludacris where it's just hot because of that quote and you just keep saying it. This is kind of more of just like a white collar kind of gem and there just wasn't anything else like it. I think maybe that just kind of displeased people as far as that kind of one. But it is a highlight and it's definitely a classic song of the 2010s this is definitely a highlight of music not just r&b or urban music from the 2010s but just music in general from the 2010s definitely one of the best songs of 2013 at least to say that but the second single is for the rest of my life and i don't really recommend this song this one's just kind of a sluggish ballad-esque almost kind of r&b tune just didn't really appreciate this one i mean this one pretty sharply I mean, Robin Thicke fell for the same trap that most R&B artists kind of fall for. I thought that this was just something that kind of had stopped happening in the 2000s. But they'll make like this jivey first single and then they'll switch the tempo of it completely and go to like a more lambent and just kind of more relaxed kind of slow jam bedroom number, something like that. And it just, I mean, I think that's Robin Thicke basically kind of damned himself right off the bat by just doing that because it just really kind of completely went from North Pole to South Pole kind of energy with just the tempo of like the album. And it just was not the thing. I mean, for one thing, for Robin Thicke to be kind of like an off the wall and kind of random cat to really chart on Billboard radio, it just he needed like another hit like that. And it, this was just not the song. The third single is Give It To You with Kendrick Lamar. And this is a really kind of bouncy dance club song. Definitely a disco tune on here. It has a real nice pace. It's very riveting. Kendrick tears this song apart too. Has a great chorus. Just overall great electric kind of feel. I mean, this one at least hit like 25 on the Billboard 100. So it was doing something right, but it kind of fell off the charts pretty quickly. I was really expecting this. This to me does not feel like just a top 25 tune. I mean, there's just too much emphasis. The melodies were good. The hook was good. Kendrick was good. The beat was good. Robin Thicke was good. There was just too much about this song. I just don't understand why it didn't get a higher charting pace. To me, this is like a top 10 single. This definitely should have hit like number seven, number six on the Billboard 100. Maybe it wouldn't have been number one, but this was a pretty excellent follow-up to Blurred Lines, and people just didn't give Robin Thicke that much of a chance. I mean, like I said, I feel like he probably needed another white collar tune. I think this works as like the third single, but he should have had another work tune to kind of ease into it, and then maybe for the rest of my life could have been the fourth single, but that was kind of how it went. And then Feel Good was kind of an odd single. I mean, this was the fourth single, but I can see this song not charting. It's a good song, and I do recommend it, but it just has a differential kind of pace from being a single. This one just feels more like an album cut that just happened to be a single. This was not quite a single ready. I'll talk about some ones I felt like probably could have been, but this one just kind of starts off with a really piano-like kind of, This one starts off with a really piano-like, graceful kind of first verse and stuff. This feels a little bit more civil and sophisticated. But then in the second verse, it starts becoming more of like a kind of mid-tempo adult contemporary dance bop and that sort of thing. I do like this song, but I, I just kind of feel like it's just kind of more for like the rhythmic charts and that type of stuff as opposed to getting Robin Thicke his higher catalog and that type of stuff. But it is a good song. It's definitely a good bop on here. Kind of is kind of blurs the lines in between like a kind of halfway work tune and a halfway kind of dance club, adult dance club kind of tune and that type of stuff. Not necessarily like a electronic kind of club or a rave type thing, but just kind of like a typical dance club where you're going to hear, maybe you'd hear like, you know, maybe you'd hear like some LMFAO there. Maybe you'd hear like, um, like Usher there, those type folks. It's something in a more adult contemporary sense, but not just like the standard kind of vanilla stuff. This isn't really vanilla as much, but it does kind of have some graceful feelings towards it. So that's just good. But yeah, so so I'm going to go ahead and talk about the 10 songs out of 13 I recommend. There's actually 14 songs. I'm reviewing the deluxe edition that has the Give It To You remix with Kendrick Lamar and 2 Chains. But I kind of, I wound up liking 10 songs out of 14, so I'll go ahead and recommend those songs. So those 10 songs would be Give It To You, Feel Good, Blurred Lines, Take It Easy On Me, 
ain't no hat for that. Top of the world, pressure, ooh la la, go stupid for you and put your loving on me. So basically some of these, like the first half of the album really has like, like the first half of the album really has like some of these jivey kind of dance cuts on here. Like I feel like ooh la la and ain't no hat for that are both kind of disco type songs. And they just really have like that kind of, this really 1977, 1979 type disco feel towards them. Just a real kind of riveting kind of guitar licks in there that just kind of make it. It's kind of like this something that like the Commodores and Marvin Gaye and some of those type people would have done. Maybe Earth, Wind and Fire. Just something real 70s like, but just uh, put in 2013. I, I do like this kind of disco slash electronic type feel of some of these. And I feel like... Um, Go Stupid For You is kind of a date cut. This one has a real romantic and spicy kind of feels. Definitely for like a night out, just amidst the date and that type of stuff. This is kind of, there's not many songs like this on here, but I do like the fact that just as far as saying that not all of these are in the process of trying to get the girl, but some of these you actually have the girl and are just kind of for, is like a night out and kind of being romantic and stuff. Put Your Loving On Me is a very atmospheric kind of outdoor area kind of tune where if there's like a porch or just like some tables outside, if you're, in like a dance club but they serve food or something like that and they've kind of got some chairs outside where you can sit and mingle smoke something like that drink a little bit it kind of reminds me of something that you just would hear in that sense it's the social venue kind of feel but it's just very atmospheric it's not quite as much dance ready but it does kind of feel like it'd be at a social venue so it kind of has that feel towards it top of the world definitely reminded me of like a sophisticated saxophone type tune definitely new york s east coast s this really feels like a coffee shop like tune it's very jivey and quick but it just kind of feels a lot more blue blood and i just like the concept of it there's not many songs like this either this one's not quite as much dance related but it is kind of got a nice jive to it, it in some cases maybe like a light dance club lick but it just kind of feels more of just like stepping out and just kind of being uh, amongst the city and stuff so Take It Easy On Me is a real electronic-ish dance jam. It's kind of lively and has like a nice hop and bop kind of feel towards it. It has a really nice chorus, probably one of the best choruses on here. Robin Thicke really has some nice choruses on this project. Like I feel like uh, Take It Easy On Me, Ooh La La, Give It To You with Kendrick Lamar, some of these top of the world's really nice i mean some of these just have some really nice cuts so it's pretty like hook ready i mean a lot of these just have some great melodies that i'm really once again surprised that robin thick just didn't do better on this album because this is a, a real kind of like earworm kind of affable rb album in a lot of ways but yeah top or take it easy on me really is a nice bop it's kind of light and like the production but it is still a good one Pressure is a really nice one. Pressure is like kind of like a, a high mid tempo jam. This gave me some mild EDM kind of feels. Robin Thicke did Robin Thick didn't really mess with EDM too much on this record, but there is enough of it on here just to be able to say that I like the concept that he I mean it was kind of interesting just because EDM was so popular in 2013, but Robin Thick does very did like a light dab in it. There might be one other song on here that has something light in that sense, but for the most part, this is just kind of more of like a electronic kind of bop on here just nice dance club kind of feel but it's kind of interesting to get so many of these and like a sense of like the album it's kind of interesting to get so many of these good dance club bosses robin thick really nailed this on this album he really managed to get like a bunch of these like ooh la la um pressure ain't no hat for that take it easy on me give it to you, put your loving on me in a more atmospheric sense. So there's just a lot of these that just have some real good bops on here for kind of stepping out and just being kind of a part of the dance club. But I would say over half the album kind of has this kind of jive about it. It's definitely a very festive and stepping out kind of project, but I do kind of feel like I like the concept of Robin Thicke having at least some more moments to kind of be able to portray on here, but they're just very lightly because this is such a compact album. You do get a sense of like the white collar kind of feels, the date night kind of feels, and like the city travers kind of feels, but they are kind of just like this fleeting. And that just kind of happens to be a thing. It's not like I'm complaining so much to that degree. I'm just letting you know that that's kind of the concept about it. It's got plenty of good social kind of moments and it kind of has like light thoughts of afterthoughts of some other things. This, I'll go ahead and talk about some of the moments I didn't enjoy, like some of the songs, like uh, the three songs or the four songs that I didn't really feel like the Give It To You remix contributed to much. 
I kind of felt like that one, just adding two chains on there, didn't really contribute to much. The original version of the song was just fine. The Good Life was kind of like an awkward ballad on here that I didn't really appreciate. Get In My Way was kind of like a productive kind of hustle song in Robin Thicke's sense. It just was kind of a more productive and kind of ambitious kind of tune. And it's good to, got, it's good to kind of get those, but it just didn't really do much in terms of like the emphasis of how the song turned out. So this wasn't quite as compelling as some of the ones where he's more recreational and not quite as driven. But I do like the concept of getting some of these. I would like to hear like a better version of like a song like Get In My Way. And then there was one other song like, uh, oh yeah, the single for the rest of my life. So that's really about it. Just a couple, like I do like the overall kind of high grade social value of this project, but I don't know. I, I, do, I am in like a mild agreement with maybe society as far as feeling that there should have been another song like Blurred Lines. Maybe it was just seen as like a, a misadvertisement or something. But I mean, for the most part, I'm not complaining much because the quality of this album is so good. There's some really excellent choruses that you could probably find yourself singing along to. Has some great singles, has, has at least one other good guest besides T.I. and Pharrell with Kendrick Lamar on here. And 2 Chains is on a remix if you get the deluxe edition. So this overall has some good stuff, but I think I'm going to give this album me liking 10, or yeah, 10 songs out of 14. I'm going to give this album a nine and a half out of 10. I feel like it's really that good. I really connected with it that much. This is an overall shred of excellence here, or an overall degree of excellence on here. The social score, I'm going to give a 10, just because there's how many hits on here, and there's so many good moments for the most part that Robin Thicke pulls off. It actually does dab into other things if you just want something more than just dance moments, but that's kind of the concept. Robin Thicke made a pretty excellent and uh, show showcase of excellence album here without using like the trendiness of EDM that was kind of going on. So this is just good disco, good electronica, good R and B on here, and it's probably one of the more electrifying contemporary records of 2013 that I can remember. I just can't think of too many R&B albums from this time period that were that good, but there were, I mean, it's not to say that they were bad, but this is definitely like state of the art here. So it's kind of the thing. So in terms of the future, like Robin Thicke, he's been gone for a while. I remember he took a pretty decent sized break after his 2014 uh, critic panned flop, uh, Paula, which I didn't dislike that album. I actually reviewed Paula years back. I think I like more than a handful of cuts on there, but most of the critics kind of panned the album. So it's been a while since Robin Thicke did anything since that album from 2014. But I think he at least has dropped maybe one or two albums since 2014. We'll have to see about that. But this is definitely a jolt of energy that you should look into.